Today we're meeting with Dr. Mary Herring at AECT in Anaheim, California. Welcome, Dr. Herring. Thank you. It's great I'm to delighted have. to be here. Okay. Could you provide an overview of who you are? Certainly. Okay. I am the Associate Dean of the College of Education at the University of Northern Iowa, but my home is in the Instructional Technology Division in the Curriculum and Instruction Department. What is the focus of your work? Well, as Associate Dean, I am an administrator overseeing multiple projects, which really my background in instructional design has helped me a lot because no matter what the project is, it still follows an instructional design process. So even though I'm no longer teaching in the Instructional Technology Division, I still use what I learned there every day in my work. That's great. How did you become interested in the field? I was a physical educator and I was the um, state president of the Physical Education Association the same year that I took a sabbatical to get my master's degree and this was in 1986 and I came in to my office and there was a computer sitting on my desk we had no computers in my middle school that I had left and it turned out that my boss had won two Apple computers the year before gotten hooked on computers so I had what we have since learned we need to have. I had an expert within yelling voice. So any questions I had about running it, he could tell me how to fix it, what to do. Um, it tweaked my interest. Uh, and then that spring, the physical education state group brought in a specialist from Minnesota who had been given a stipend to develop computer-based physical education applications. And so that combination really tweaked my curiosity. I owned a computer by December and I was upgrading it by May, taking it apart, reading all the little directions. Don't touch here, don't touch there. Now press down as hard as you possibly can. <laughs> and that got me into the world. Could you describe your career path? Well, as I said, I was a middle school physical educator, um, but found very early on in that career that I liked, I liked the networking with professionals, and I liked being part of the process that was making a difference. And I realized after the sabbatical um, to get my master's degree that I really wanted to be at the um, collegiate level. So I left there and took a position as the Director of Student Teaching at North Dakota State University. And I loved it, but realized very quickly I didn't have a voice because I didn't have a terminal degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day, one of my friends who was a dean said to me, it's time for you to go get a doctorate. And started looking around and discovered Iowa State University, which had a focus on instructional technology and education. And that, that captured me. So that took me there. How would you just describe your research interests and aspirations when you first started your career? Well, my dissertation um, was on what do K-12 teachers need to know and be able to do to design constructivist-based mm -hmm. online learning environments. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that was that as a teacher in the schools, we got handed solutions before we even knew there was a question. Huh. They hand you a curriculum. Implement this. We've adopted this. and. What I wanted to be was that person in the middle that worked with the teachers to give to empower them to take responsibility for what they were doing. And so that was my first research, was figuring out what is it that we need to do to professionally develop, develop teachers so that they are empowered to design the kind of environments that they want. Right. How did your um, research interests change over time? You know, they really didn't. Hmm. I would say they really didn't. Um, the research side continued in the online perspective. 
Um, I developed courses that were based in constructivism. I, um, most of the work that I've done, articles that I've written have been either around online learning or um, I became interested that an evolution of that was um, the role of standards and curriculum alignment. And so um, that's another side for me that the research has expanded into. Is there anything else you would like to share about your current research interests? Um, right now, my research interest centers around uh, the role of clinical field experiences in rural school districts, hmm. which is very different from where I've been, but um, I have a, am co-PI on a grant that is focused on this, but has a technology arm because one of the ways to stay connected in these schools um, is through the use of technology. And so we have a technologist um, on the team. And uh, so that's really been where my focus is. We've been developing uh, a classroom that is an immersive one-to-one -one environment for our faculty to use because over half of the school districts in the state of Iowa have one-to-one -one initiatives. So the question now um, is, what do we need to have in place in order to, have, to prepare pre-service teachers to effectively be effective teachers in these settings? So that's been now the shift, but part of that has been driven by the role of technology in that process and its influence. What are some of the major ideas or approaches that stimulated your professional growth? Constructivism. Definitely constructivism. I uh, um, came to my first AECT conference in 1993, and in 1991 a book was published on constructivism mm -hmm. that had the two sides of positivism and constructivism. and. Um, I read an article on constructivism that grew out of some of that work and um, came to AECT and took a workshop from Tom Duffy and John Savage. And that really put me on that pathway. Spent the next year working with a professor at Iowa State, really dissecting constructivism and what does it mean and what does it look like. And it became the basis for, um, the learning basis for my work. It sounds like those scholars had a big influence on your life. Huge. Right. Are there any others that you'd like to talk about and share? Well, I think Tom Duffy was a major one. Uh, he Not only did he start me on that path, but for my dissertation, he served on my Delphi committee and served as an external consultant on the research for me. And I was at Iowa State, he was at Indiana. Oh, wow. I mean, that, that was, and that's all because of AECT. <laughs> I think, um, AECT itself, my connections that I made here, and the commitment of the professionals, <coughs> excuse me, the, the commitment of the professionals in AECT to support graduate students is just a part of the fiber. Yeah. And so that fiber allowed me to have the top constructivists in the field that I worked with. Um, my advisor said, how did you get all these people? And I said, I walked up and asked. <laughs> so I would say she, uh, or um, you know, it started there. Uh, personally, the person in the field who's had the most effect on me is Sharon Smaldino. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Sharon uh, and I started working together in 1992 when I became a, a, a graduate student and was assigned to work with her on a major grant to develop training materials for um, a video system that we put in Iowa called the Iowa Communications Network. Mm -hmm. And my advisor actually was one of the people who started the site conference, Society for um, Instructional Technology and Teacher Education. But because of my close work with Sharon, um, I was introduced to AECT and it became my professional home. So, uh, and then through the interactions of people that I met here, um, I would say Charlie Rigeluth would be another one who 
took the time to sit down and visit with me about constructivism long, long ago, and then invited me to join him in developing me, and then invited me to join he and others to create the Systemic Change Division, which I did and uh, had the privilege of being the chair of for two years. And then when we reconstructed the divisions in AECT, I was one of the first presidents of the Teacher Education Division. Fantastic, thank you for sharing those stories. Mm -hmm. What do you think has been the greatest accomplishment in your career so far? Mm. Oh, it's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> and why? <laughs> um, I would say uh, that being president of AECT probably was uh, professionally the biggest accomplishment of my career. Uh, having that acknowledgement from the professionals in your field uh, that you have the ability to impact an organization such a, an organization such as this is huge and very affirming. It says that the work that you've done has has been recognized um, and that people have faith in you. And so I would say that personally from that perspective. I think um, the book that, that Mike Spector and Barbara Lockie and Sharon Smaldino and I just published yeah. on learning uh, problem solving and mind tools, um, essays in honor of David Jonathan. Um, I would say that I, I feel that that book truly honors all of the work that David has done in the field and assists in continuing that legend and those ideas on. And so I'm extremely proud of that work. Yeah, that's great, great. If you don't mind me asking, if a, you as a graduate student who aspired to get involved in AECT because it made such a difference in your life, what advice would you give them? I would say that you're in the perfect place to do it. It is um, just a part of AECT that graduate students are treated as professionals and um, as equals in what we're doing. So my encouragement is to get involved in divisions. Where's your passion? You have the graduate student assembly. Be involved in that, but be involved in one of the other divisions that will continue with you as you move forward. And you start by volunteering to do something. Volunteer to be a re reviewer. Um, you know, volunteer to work on a project. Volunteer to work to write an article for the division. Uh, and then you get to know people. Yeah. And the only way you find out about opportunities is to be involved. Mm -hmm. So that would be my encouragement, would be to get yourself involved in, in other projects at AACT. If it's not a division, mm -hmm. We have multiple other activities. We have committees going on, standards committee, um, definitions and terms committee. Huh. Um, those kinds of opportunities are there. And you just drop in and say, hi, I'm here. I'm interested. I'd like to see if there's something I can do to assist. Right. It's good to hear that. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how would you like to be remembered within the profession? I, I think I'd like to be remembered uh, as a person who um, assisted in making a difference in the field. You know, that, that the work that I've done, um, whether it's uh, in scholarly writing, service to the organization, service to the field, um, I think to be in a position where you have actually see that, that that changes have been made, or doors have been opened, or ideas have been put forward, is, uh, as a professional, a goal that is um, absolutely tandem on. What are your favorite AECT memories? Well, I think um, probably this is an ongoing story, because back in, uh, 2003, Anna Donaldson and I, unbeknownst to each other, even though we were working together, asked Sharon Smaldino to run for president of AECT. And we both volunteered 
to be her co-chair or her chair of program planning. Mm -hmm. She said to both of us, you both volunteered, would you be our, my co-chair? And in the course of that year, we determined that if any of us ran for president, that we, the other two would be the co-chair. So uh, in 2007 when I ran, Sharon and Anna agreed to be my co-chair. And three years ago when Anna ran, Sharon and I agreed to be her co-chair. That's powerful. And we're very <laughs> proud of the fact that during that tenure, those three conferences had the highest attendance of any. So I think it's quite a record um, for us. Uh, it's, it is the outward growth of a wonderful friendship. Wow. Congratulations. What a fabulous story. <laughs> <laughs> any, other, any other stories that come to mind? Um, it's okay. One third of the graduate students, I mean, one third of the population of AECT is graduate students. Really? And so really? when the, um, in 2007, I got to know the graduate students very well because I was the president elect. And that class of students are the ones that started GSA. So that proposal came in, you know, <laughs> while I was on executive board and, and we were thrilled because the executive board saw that as a vehicle for graduate students to have a voice that they needed yes. in AECT because um, there's such an important component of who we are and what we do. It keeps us young, it keeps us <laughs> full of new ideas, and the energy and the synergy of all that is amazing. So um, working, acknowledging the work of graduate students, um, um, celebrating the work. Uh, is just a part of what ACT is all about. It's fabulous. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anything else you'd like to share that we haven't asked today? Um. I think AECT is an amazing organization because it is truly an international organization and you can, I am so proud to see the flavor and the diversity of this organization. It is uh, one of the things that was important, an important discussion during my tenure. Um, I think Michael Spector is the one who really k expanded the vision. And I think we are now really poised as an organization to uh, impact our field around the world and to be a major voice around the world and so our discussion about graduate students this provides incredible opportunities for expanded horizons and um, for major growth. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. You're welcome.